the trim fin bolts into the aluminium of the tail boom with just two bolts. Now this is not very thick aluminium, so what I've got to put in is a doubler. The doubler will actually fit up in here on the inside of that hole and will then have some nut plates on it for the bolts to go through here to attach the trim fin. So because it's difficult to work on the inside, to fix it and drill the holes, we put in a piece of tube the same size as the spar. This will sit over the top of it, like so. Once you've drilled one hole, then you put in the Clico, which is this little device, which basically has a plunger on it. So when you squeeze it together, you can see this becomes narrow enough to fit through the hole. But when you then let it off, it's like an arrowhead. It comes back and holds it in place. So that goes in like that, you let go. You've now got that nice and fixed, that's pretty solid, which means you can then work your way around and do the others. We'll do the bottom one, then the sides, until we've got the template all drilled out. Now that the two spars are bolted together in the centre of the tail boom, I need to set the pitch angle of these little wings. And to do that, I've got this special little cutout that has a mark on it here, which is the line, the cord line, which goes straight through the centre of the aerofoil and then comes out at the trailing edge of the wing. That slots on there like that. Make sure it doesn't sit on a rivet at the trailing edge. We can check the angle on here, eight degrees. 8.1 degrees there. It needs to be exactly the same as the angle of the top of the boom. So just pop that on there. And if I'm very lucky, and I am, that's exactly the same, 8 to 8.1 degrees. So that's perfect. So in that position, without moving it, I can mark the holes in this attachment plate here at the end of the fin, top and bottom, drill that out, and then pop rivet on the nut plates to bolt this on this side and the other side. And then this job is sorted. Next job is to attach the vertical trim fin and when you look through the build manual here it has basically six lines on that which says you've got to cut down, bend and fit the vertical trim fin bracket to the tail and that's the first job to do and then this is a complete piece that comes in the kit which will be up like that as a vertical trim fin funnily enough so let's get that out of the way because I need to bend the bracket here it's already got 45 degree bends in here, which is fine. We need a 90 degree or near 90 degree bend down here. Now, if you just did that by whacking that down, it's a very good chance you'd crack the metal. So, we need a bit of heat. bracket just bolts top and bottom into the last bulkhead in the tail boom and this then will slot in like so. See this is the great thing about working in a professional workshop. David! <laughs> Where, where's the big kit? Thanks mate. One. Excellent. You little devil. Did I say this was simple? What have you got there? Got that? With that collapsed? Thank you, Tony. Yes. The next job is to balance these blades. To do that, I've set up a special jig in the vise, which is completely level. I've set that up with the inclinometer and I need to just slot on that carriage slider assembly and the pulley just to add a bit of weight on the end of the main rotor shaft here and then all I do is sit the shaft on the aluminium like so make sure that both blades are right up against their bearing stops and that the whole thing is free to rotate and the point 
of balancing these blades is to stop vibration because these blades, the tail rotor, will spin at something like two and a half thousand revs, which is five times the main rotors. So that's on there. And then just let go and see what happens. And what happens is it drops down slightly this side, which obviously means this side is too heavy. So I need, I've got some different pieces of aluminium here, different sizes, so obviously different weights, and then I can play with it and trim them down until I've got the perfect piece. Once I've decided exactly what weight it is, then we can fix that on the inside for good. Just make sure we're not touching anything. See what happens now. First time lucky, that is looking like a job in the town. Now to assemble all the bits on the main shaft here. And the first bit to go on there is number five, E176125, the carriage slider assembly, which is that bit. It is followed by the bearing plate, which is this one here. Then this locking collar, when you put this on, you turn it and it will lock the bearing onto the shaft. Next is this little aluminium collar, followed by the pulley. That's very, very tight. But fear not, because I have a trick up my sleeve. Anybody got a hairdryer? I bet it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> See, it does work. There we go. One aluminium pulley on. What a neat trick. I am really surprised that worked, I have to tell you. But it's on. And next goes on this sleeve. Then the bearing lock. There, and then finally the other bearing plate. There we go. So all the other bits this side on the blade side can all slide up towards the boss of the pulley, like so, and then the whole lot can go in the tail boom. It's very large and it's very expensive. It costs about £3,000, and if I stick it up this way, you will see it's actually the bit that you attach the blades to. It's the main rotor shaft, but before you can put this in the helicopter, Oh, you need to fit one of these. Yes, you need your DIY ladders when you're doing this job because you need to be at the top of the airframe because this is where this bearing is going to sit. Now, it's a heavy bit of kit. If you drop it, you'll damage the powder coating. So take your jacket, just drop that down there. There's a little bit of protection. The bearing itself is very straightforward. It's housed within a plate here. It's a movable bearing, self-adjusting. If you look on the underside of it, you can see that the hole here is eccentric to the outside, and that's because there will be a locking ring on here that eventually will lock onto the shaft. And front top, like so. sorted. Next job, the bottom bearing. This is the bottom bearing. It needs to sit about there. But of course it needs some bracketry, which is what I've got down here. This is the upper engine mount clevis, and it sits up like so. Then this here is the bearing plate itself, which will sit on the front like that. I'm just going to just drop in a couple of bolt one there just get the nuts just need to tighten them up the bearing itself sits in the plate like so and a little top cap and now I can put the expensive bit in all I need to do is just sit it on this bottom bearing she goes. But is it worth three grand? Mm. Now, the acid test is whether or not the shaft is exactly at 90 degrees to the square section tubes. And that is perfect. And I know I've put an inclinometer on the other way 
and I know it's vertical in the other plane. So that is a top.